I'm in sacrificial mode today for some reason. And I also have noticed uh, a certain chess player from Auckland has passed away. Quite an early age, I think, due to the uh, terribleness of cancer. And so I actually said to him, you can hear my stomach a wee bit. But I actually said to him just across the waves on Facebook this morning, I'm going to play a game for you. And I think that that's had an influence on my play because, uh, yeah, I've gone quite sacrificial. The position that he is holding up is actually um, the position that is centered around him or his notice of um, departure from this earth, I won't give any names out of course, um, is showing a position that as black I can actually lose quite quickly. I can lose quite quickly in this uh, black position that he has on the demonstration board. So here, without further ado, so I thank you very much for that player. That player is one of the ones that coach the juniors and gives of their time freely and that sort of thing. So maybe they're a bit, you know, maybe just like me, I get a little bit of um, someone saying to me when I coach someone, I'm going to give you some food, David. I'm going to make you a meal. Well, they are words that I love to hear. And I hope that he did also. I have actually played him a game. And so I, I think I've actually played him a match game at least once. And so I might look for that game to play that on this channel or on Facebook or something similar to that. Or I might just put the score sheet up. I think I lost. So here comes the six games. With it, without further ado. Of my sacrificial mode today. That I'm in for some reason. Maybe it's that. Here we start with the starting position of game one today. Which was played 36 minutes ago. This is a blitz three minute. And all of them are. So I'm white of course and g5 and the horse has moved away after g5. Here we go. This is already, this is a long, 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 long term sacrifice. I was actually thinking about, it's your move. What would you, I, uh, sorry, I was looking, then I saw it. What did I see? And so I played this move. And this goes real long term uh, unseen circumstances sacrifice. So here's Queen G4 with the idea of already Queen H4 checkmate. See? Checkmate. So my opponent played a very good move here, and I must admit, I didn't see it. Rook F7. <laughs> I didn't see it. Yet. And so I play now, I play, I've got to crunch these pawns. So if the um, wrong thing takes the pawn, it might be okay for me, but I'm not sure. I don't want to, I don't want to check, but here's Queen G6. So now I've threatened the Rook twice on F7 with the Queen and Rook, the Queen and Bishop. So Black sort of has to do something about that. So it goes King F7. Uh, King, sorry, I'm getting all my things wrong here. King G8. So I now play F5 with the idea of Bishop H6. And then I threaten just Queen G7 checkmate. See, because the Rook's pinned. So I play now F5. Here comes Knight um, D7, Knight BD7. As it's and here's Bishop H6 as promised, and now if um, if now King 
F8, I believe that I'd have to just do something like drastic, like bishop F7 probably. And I might just have to sack, um, sack my way out of it to get a reason, reasonable endgame. But here, my opponent played king, uh, queen f8. So this actually helps restore the pin on g7 pawn and the rook on f7. Whereas if king f8, okay, if king f8, I think it was a lot worse for me. I think it was better for black. So maybe the computer would agree with that. But anyway, so I played king h1 because I want to join this rook into g1 into this attack on g7, you see. And uh, this move I don't think helps because now I play rook e8 and now I'm threatening bishop g7, see. I'm actually threatening here bishop g7 and so king h8, the best move. So now, without further ado, I think, right, time to get material, some sort of material balance here. And black now goes into gh6, and I play bishop e8, knight e8, not queen e8, as queen g7 is checkmate, okay? So if queen e8, then queen g7 is checkmate. So knight e8, and now... I play my other rook to f1 in the, in the uh, style of, not me, but the style of that of the great chess grandmaster world champion Gary Kasparov. Bringing everyone other than the king, like Magnus would bring the king in, other than the king, other than the king, uh, rook a f1 and saying I want to play I want to play I want to be in the here too knight d f6 good see this bishop on a5 is almost like at this stage out of the game and not really participating so it's like I've got two rooks against the um, against the queen and knights so now I bring the other rook, I bring my other rook after rook a f1, I bring my other rook into play to threaten rook h3. And I think this causes panic. Uh, bishop b6, uh, not really doing anything. Rook h3, or you go, rook h6 already. Knight g8, it's your move now. What would you play now? So pause the machine if you like what would be the move you'd play now that would be um i don't think i've got the word right coup de gras uh, i go coup de gras but uh coup de gras or gr something like that anyway and i'm not going to edit this uh video at all i'm just going to put it out there uh because i think it's quite good because um i like to keep it yeah, I think it's quite good because there's, I'm in a sacrificial mode in this, so I think it's... So anyway, here comes the move, okay? Here comes the move that I think was the straw that broke uh, Black's back, is F6. Knight EF6. What do you do? What would we do here? What can we do here for Black other than take the pawn? We might take it with the right pawn, rook. I mean, the the, the knight. So knight e f six is probably the best move. But then comes this move. Okay. Now I hope you see it. Rook f six, queen f six, and now the drawing away puzzle sort of query here is rook h six. Maybe one of my games will get in there today. One of the games I played today might get into the puzzle lot for people to be able to solve but I don't know about the actual initial position and that's where my opponent lost on time game two is coming up now game two is not exactly the best one but I was wanting to play hoping that black would miss queen takes g6 as it's black's move 
But black, by the way, is one nil up with me before this result. I played Queen C2 from D1, threatening Queen G6. My opponent played Bishop F5, so I just went back again. Okay, and then Rook E8. So this isn't so much a, a sacrifice or a sacrificial sort of a game. I played Knight H4, Bishop D7, and my opponent, who's 1-0 up, after this move, Knight G6 resigned. So that's quite good. That was game two. Here my opponent is 2-0 up against me. 2-0 up against me. So this is game three. That Those games weren't played today, of course. I, I, I'm I glad they weren't. Uh, this is game three. So the other games were played some time ago. I don't know when. Um, but So we start off at move eight for white. And this isn't so much, therefore, a sacrificial encounter, but it is still a very, very nice attacking game. So anyone that likes attacking games might like these ones, okay? So I might hit it up as that attacking, pardon me, excuse me, attacking games people will like, <laughs> Or something like that. That's why I'm going to head it up. Okay. So I'm going to head it up. So if you want to find it later on. Just remember those words. <laughs> something like that. Probably not. I'm just, I might just say. I'm in an attacking mood. But I'm always in an attacking mood. Okay. There's another one. I'm in an attacking. Sacrificial. Sacrificial mood. So here comes the first move. Now the check comes and I win the rock. And I have to get rid of this knight on e5. See this knight on e5. I want to get rid of that knight because it's very annoying. Now I play queen here with the threat of rook h3. Check. I mean not check but it would be if the uh, king goes to h1 instead. I've took the rook back. Now I want to get rid of this knight, as otherwise it's a little bit of an issue. So get rid of this knight. B6. Now open up the A file. Now the A file is open. And it's your move now. What would you play? I'll just drink my first cup of coffee. It's very, very late coffee, but anyway, it's my first cup of coffee, so it's your move. What would you play now? Because I was actually lower in time as I was in other games. Very naughty. There's probably uh, other moves here too, but the move I played was Rook G6. Now, this is really kind of final uh, because I don't see anything how white can get out of being checkmated soon and losing terribly. Okay, so white played rook a1 and upon rook g2 resigned because now I just have simply queen g1 or h1 or rook g1 checkmate. So that was that game. I think that was game three. Now this is game four. I made a mistake. This isn't actually this is actually sacrificial. <laughs> but um I'm already uh queen up. So rook f4. So I'll go through this quickly, this one. And my opponent resigns. So that's game four. So that's not exactly a sacrificial one. As you can see. Um, I hope 
that after rook f1, queen f1 is checkmate. And there's no other move for white here than to play 28 rook f1, capture the rook on check. So there you go. So that's game, I believe it's game four. So here come the two crunchies. So here's probably the best example of my sacrificial mode today. Uh, this is this is probably one of the most, uh, yeah, it's, it's probably a really good game from, from my point of view that I played here today. I'm not going to say it's not going to be without mistakes, but here it goes now. So here's proof of my sacrificial mode, and it's probably due to respecting a great coach and, and supporter of New Zealand Chess in Auckland uh, from this player that's passed away just earlier on. And so that's probably with that. That's what I believe. Okay, so here comes E4. Okay, so that's sort of sacrificial. I have to work at getting that pawn back maybe if I want to especially after bishop f5 after capture d4 and bishop f5 I have to work but I don't have to work too hard because I would have bishop h5 of course d e4 now comes my my new move new move a new move bishop h5 this is a novelty this has never been played by me before and my opponent took the pawn okay now, is it bait, or is it just like a blunder from David Wigner? It's Queen H5. Now, the next moves are very, very, are very important, I think, because at the moment, my Queen's down here, my Rook's looking down here, my Bishop can join in the fun, and after E6, which is what I think my opponent played, I could play Bishop here, and I immediately gain material of this rook here else otherwise queen f7 if rook e8 is quite good for white and then rook h4 okay i mean rook f4 i want to go go do the move straight away rook f4 or uh something similar queen g h5 and queen g6 and all sorts of things i mean you just heard my mind's going wild about all the things that would happen if after bishop a3 my opponent would go rook e8 and it's just like my mind just has a real field day with it i mean i i, I even look at things like um bishop h6 but after queen f7 but they're no good of course but that's the sort of thing that my brain's doing at this age very very old age 62 so anyway here let's go with um the following e6 okay and so here i could play bishop to a3 which for those that don't understand uh, algebraic is bishop a3 but i played bishop g5 and hereupon, my opponent doesn't have to play f6, but did. Queen g6. Now, this is... Uh, I, I don't know which way I want to go for white here after the king moves to h8. Because otherwise, if bishop g7, then bishop d8. And it's basically all over, I think. Um... But here comes king h8. So I think I took it the right way. I went bishop f6. I don't know. I probably should have... Rook f6 is looking pretty good. Rook f6. But I went bishop f6. Rook f6. Now I threaten... Um, I threaten... I have to look first, to be honest. Queen h5. Queen g5. Rook h6 checkmate. So that's why I threaten, but it's still black's turn. So here comes queen e7. And I went with the idea of, well, I'm going to go queen h6 check. And then if you go queen 
H7, I go rook f8, checkmate. So my opponent didn't go, went king g8, so it made it a little bit more difficult. So I just went rook g6, king f7, rook g7, rook f1. As I said before, which I went a bit gobbled or got with my English there, didn't I? Uh, Gary Kasparov would bring this rook into play, would say, come on, you're in this game too. D, uh, C5 to prevent King D6 moves. Not that I need to be quick, but I need to be careful because otherwise I just don't play the right move. Rook e8 and queen f6 is checkmate. And so the final game is game 6 and it didn't actually account for the tournament because it ran over time. We will begin here at move 12 for white. My opponent has uh, a reasonable rating, 2088. And here is this game that was played 36 minutes ago. And it's more attacking than actually um, sacrificial. But I'll leave you to the, be the judge of that. Uh, Bishop e4, mm, I don't know. It's a sad move for uh, white players to play uh, this because it weakens all white squares whites white squares round their king as i have a bishop left so black is met i, I thought f5 came so i go bishop h3 to stop the bishop from being locked out for a while So this is a bit sad now. This isn't quite sacrificial, but it's quite attacking. I'm in a, an attacking mode. And no nonsense. So here. Can I play Queen G3 check? No, I can't. I can play it, but it doesn't work because the king has a square on H2. I hope you see what I'm saying because rook f1 would be checkmate if it wasn't. So if the knight was pinned to the queen, if the queen was on here, then white could be met by rook f1 checkmate. Here's queen f4, which is actually threatening uh, this check, but also threatening this check too. So it's actually threatening queen f1 check and rook f1 checkmate. As I probably so queen b5 happened. Get off the board, you. Yeah, queen f5 happened, so I have to put something in the way of this wanting. You know, I want to play this queen f1 move for players like you out there, and I hope your chess is going really, really well. And I hope that you enjoy this session. Um, I want to play knight d3. Ah, oh, so queen f2. Knight d3. I want to throw a spanner in the works, and so that if knight takes knight, then I go, that's old school, queen g2, checkmate. If um, other things like queen takes knight, which I don't think is going to happen, my opponent played a really bad move, uh, or well, played some sort of sacrificial lineup after this. So they were in a sacrificial mode. They were in sacrificial mode. Not me in this game. A good on my opponent. Uh, went bishop g7. I thought, oh yeah, okay, queen d7. I have to bring this bishop back, don't I? To take the queen. And then knight takes. And I took this. So this is um, a little bit sad. That it wasn't quite sacrificial. But it's still attacking. Checkmate. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that session and I wish you all the best with your chess no matter where it's at. 
Okay. And thank you very much for watching. Try to enjoy the game of chess and remember the five su respects, the five suspects, the five respects of chess is, um, yeah, number one, respect your opponent. Number two, respect your opponent's pawns and pieces. Number three, respect your great chess prowess and yourself. Number four, respect your great chess pieces and pawns especially. And number five, respect the game of chess. And with that, your game of chess will be good. It'll be great, I think, in my opinion. Sounds like something out of Dr. Zeus's Cat in the Hat or something like that. Okay, bye-bye. I'll just put my hat on. I'll just put my hat on. The Cat in the Hat strikes back. David Wiegener, over and out. <laughs>